This is my Tough Wing 32 inch flying wing that I recently built. I'll put a link to the build video in the description, but I have to share what is a complete and utter uh, moment of idiocy on my part. So I had this thing loaded up ready to go for its maiden flight and in the back of the car. And there were a few things, you know, unsettled in the back and I hit the gas and of course they fell on top of this control arm. So as you can see, this looks like it's made out of balsa and it's completely snapped. So in this video, <laughs> I'm going to uh, want cut this out and then I'm going to walk you through the process of actually uh, designing a replacement piece and printing it on a MakerBot Replicator 2. Okay, so you can see I've used an X-Acto and hopefully did minimal damage to this flap to uh, get this control piece out. Now if you look at it, unfortunately I should have taken an image of this before it was you know broken into pieces but I had to break it to get it out and so what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, basically I'm going to take a photo of it get the dimensions and then trace it in a 3D program such as Rhino 3D and then we'll print it out on the printer and give it a go and if you notice this little uh, cutout there's actually one other piece that sits right in there. Anyway, this is for this guy to mount you know, into this slot and there's a little uh, spar or rod that goes through this flap and so this sits kind of right over that rod. The next thing I'm going to do is we're just going to take some rough measurements just to get the box outline. So it looks like width-wise we're at about, we'll just say 38 millimeters. wide. Okay, it looks like we're roughly, we'll just say 33 millimeters tall. So we got 38 by 33. Okay, next up we're going to just get a nice level photo. Okay, and then we'll transfer that to our computer and begin the trace. Okay, I'm in Rhino 3D and this is where we'll begin our design process. Now, I won't go into the specifics of how to use Rhino 3D. I've done a few tutorials on my channel that talk you through that. But if you have any que questions about this specific uh, tutorial, please feel free to post a comment below. So, why don't we start with a rectangle and we'll go into the top viewport. And what we'll do is we'll actually size this rectangle to the dimensions of our piece that we're going to trace. So I'll turn on snap and then we'll set the width at 38 which is what we measured with our calipers and then the height at 33. Okay now we're going to import our picture. Let me go ahead and create a new layer and we'll just call it a background image and this will actually be where we're going to import uh, what is called a picture frame for the photo that we took with the iPhone and so I'll just start it here kind of draw it out and there you can see our piece now what we're going to want to do is actually size uh, this image so that it fits perfectly within this box because we know that uh, as we just drew it it's 38 wide by 33 millimeters tall so let's go ahead and get a, a reference point. And let's use the top left as a reference point since that's the furthest uh, reaching part. The next thing we want to do is you'll notice there's a little bit of overlap here and a little bit of a gap here. So we'll rotate and then we'll scale our piece uh, to fit the dimensions of our rectangle. So I'll go ahead and select it and hit rotate or type rotate and kind of use that as a reference point in that and now you'll notice I can rotate it just to where say right there is pretty close to having everything lined up. Now we're going to scale our image and we'll just kind of scale it you know right along this edge here get it to right so they're pretty close and flush. Now we have our piece sized accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and delete this guy and what we can do now is let's go ahead and lock 
our background layer because what we're going to do is draw on top of it. And so that will just prevent us for, from accidentally selecting it or having it get in the way. Okay, let's go ahead and begin our trace. Actually, before we do, let's, let's do something with this uh, background image. I want to set the transparency a little bit just so that we can see the background grid uh, as a reference. We'd like to be able to see kind of our XY uh, lines as we draw this. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll lock that background layer. I'll create a new one and we'll just call it trace. And that's the layer we're going to trace onto, uh, trace our outline onto of this control arm. So I'll go ahead and we're going to use the curve tool. And I'll zoom in. And you just want to get as close as you can to these edges as you draw. And the more points that you draw around a curve, such as this one, the more accurate it's going to be. So you just kind of nice and easily make your trace and then if you have a straight line you can just leave a little bit of a gap So our trace looks pretty good. Now, you know, if you ever want to tweak anything, there's actually, you can turn on control points. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see that there, with each one of these points, you can kind of adjust, you know, the curvature and uh, the placement of the point. So let me just go ahead and so get that kind of close to the corner. You could tweak around with these all day long, but uh, this is a pretty good start. Now let's go ahead and wrap up just by putting our hole where our uh, control rod connects to. So I'll just use the circle tool and click right about in the middle. Have it a little bit bigger than that diameter. And now we should be ready to extrude uh, this object. Let me turn off the uh, background layer. We can kind of see our trace, and I'll actually turn off the control points. Okay, now we're in our perspective view, and what we're going to do is actually extrude this curve that we created. Now, I failed to uh, measure the thickness of the control arm at the beginning, but I, I just did, and it's 1.6 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is bump that up to 2 millimeters just to account for some of the foam that was cut away. Uh, when I pulled the broken arm out. So what we'll do is we'll select our curve and then we're going to use a command called extrude curve and we're going to extrude two units or two millimeters. Now you'll notice that the the curve is open so what we can do is actually go to a, a command called surface planar curves and we're going to select that top edge and hit enter and there we've closed that surface and we'll do the same for the bottom we'll select that curve hit enter and now we have a closed piece okay so finally we'd like to make our hole our, our hole cut out and before we can do that let me actually show you in perspective view if you flip it over you'll notice that we have the different pieces that we made earlier. So what we actually want to do is we want to select those and I'm going to deselect our hole and then we're going to join those pieces. And what that will do is that will now allow us to make a nice hole cut out in our control arm. And I'll select the hole and we'll use the command called make hole and if we look in this front view, I'm going to select, actually let me select the top surface. If we look in the front view, I'm just going to make it come up right to the top here and hit enter. And now 
we'll go back to perspective and now we can see our hole going all the way through our design. So that's it for the tracing extrusion and cutting the hole into our design. And when we export, we're, we just want to select our design that we just did. We want to make sure that we don't export everything or else we'll end up with uh, the background image in our STL file. So we'll go to export selected, export it, and then let's check out our design in Makerware. Make sure that everything looks dimensionally correct before we give it a print. It looks pretty good. Nothing too fancy, but uh, definitely should be able to get us in the air. So our design is currently being drawn. We're about 70% done. So it should be coming hot off the press here in just a minute. All right, there it is. Let's peel it off and take a look. Okay, so here is our 3D printed piece that we just designed and printed on the MakerBot compared to the original. And I'd have to say it's pretty spot on. Only difference now, once again, is made this a little thicker just because of some of the stuff I had to cut away, but our design looks pretty good. Definitely gonna be more durable than this piece of balsa wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount it. So I have our control horn glued in and ready to go. And powered up, so let's just give this a test. See how everything looks. Looks like it's holding up really well. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my lipo fully charged and take it out in the field for the maiden flight. And I'll post a follow up video when that's ready. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and upload uh, the design of this control horn for the tough wing to the uh, Garage Pilots GitHub account and I'll uh, post a link in the description for you guys if you're interested you can download it and also post the uh, Rhino 3D file in case you want to tweak it or maybe uh, as I said I made it a little bit thicker maybe you want to make it a little thinner or do any mods you're, you're more than welcome to and if you have any questions about the design or getting uh, this you know, set up to be 3D printed, feel free to uh, post a question in the comments below, and thanks for watching.